Hi, this is a continuation of my 10-loop double braid um, video tutorial. Uh, I didn't get very far into the solid rectangular form of this braid in the first video. We start. I started to show how to make the turns, the loop transfers turned, or crossed, or reversed, whichever term you, you like to use for that, at the very end of the first video. That is how you make a solid, well, I call it a solid rectangle, because there's also potential with this type of braiding to make a hollow rectangle. There's many different shapes that can actually be made with once you double a square braid, many more than the three you can get with a square braid. Hollow, uh, the, the, the same, the flat version too that uh, you can do with a, with a, a flat, and this is actually just an eight loop double braid done flat. Um, we're working on the the solid rectangle because it is the simplest to learn, or the best to learn, I think, after learning the divided version. The divided version has no transfers turned, and it makes a separated upper and lower layer of the braid. That was what we were doing first. No turns in the transferred loops. Then when you turn all the transfers, you get a braid that's the upper and lower surface are very interconnected and I call it a solid rectangular braid. It's, it is rectangular. On the side, it, it is, you can see it's about as, as thick as a square braid of the same threads would be, thickness of threads, but it's twice as wide as a square braid. So it's essentially two square braids joined together. The pattern we will be doing, we'll be doing two, a uh, pattern I call edge. It was, I think, sometimes called that in the, the old manuscripts, and the pattern they refer to as crowns. Both patterns are done with bicolor loops of just two colors, so it's um, you can shift between them. It's very similar to some of the patterns in the Spanish seven loop braid that I've also made a video for. If you were to use single color loops, you would get a very different you would get very different patterns. This is a, a braid done with single color loops. They make great patterns too. Um, I'm using bicolor loops mostly because in this demo because it's very easy to see if you've turned the loop or not because the the color that's uppermost in your fingers will change will change and it's tricky in the beginning to make sure that you have or haven't turned the loops when you should have. Okay, I'm picking up this is a continuation exactly where I left off before and I'm picking the loops up from the stand I've set them on. Um, I always Dealing with thumbs, I always pick up loops, however I set them down, I do not pick them up onto my thumb. I always pick up the first loop, the outermost loop, with the first finger, and then move it up to the thumb, because the thumb holds it in such a different orientation that if I were to pick it up with the thumbs, I just know I would do it wrong. Whereas, here they are, light shanks, uh, well, actually, we've changed around since I started turning the, the loops, but I happen to know the light shank should be uppermost on this first loop, which will be the thumb loop. Now I'm going to um, shift my loops up one position, all of them, and that way the the shank comes out on the right side of the thumb. It's just tricky to pick loops up, pick loops up with the thumb. I always pick up with the fingers and then shift them onto the thumb. When you set loops down, you must pick them up. It, you set them down. It's best to set them down palms up. The pegs or t combs, tines of the comb or whatever you're using, substitute for your fingers. So they go, you set them down palms up and you pick them up that way as well. You would not go and pick up the loop going down into the loop. Up into it the same way the peg is up to it. I always start with the outermost, picking up the outermost loops. They're the last ones I lay down and the first ones I pick up. It seems easier that way. I'll make these a little more taut. Okay, so I'm picking up this will be the thumb loop, but I'm picking it up with the first finger. And then next one, and I'm certain, inserting my finger up through the loop, the same way the peg is up through the loop. The pegs are like my fingers. Here I have four loaded onto my hands. I'm going to shift them up one position. Look to the thumb, pick up the last one. There. And as before, if I'm going to park the loops on my hands, I do it, I will now face the two thumbs directly towards each other so that I know when I pick it up, I'll pick it up. It'll have the upper shank in the right place. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of this.
stand. Um, and we'll continue braiding. When we, uh, the, I didn't mention this when at the end of the first video, but the pattern that I will be making is called crowns. It's the, oh, I already showed it, and it begins with bicolor. Well, it's made with bicolor loops, all of the same two colors, and you begin with the same color on the upper shank of each finger. So we started with all dark shanks up. That was how this divided section was being made. We started with all dark shanks up, and I began braiding with turned loop transfers, crossed or reversed, however you want to call them. So the colors are all changing. The colors of the upper shanks are turning over, and in the next move, in the next cycle, I believe, um, all after it, all the blue shanks will be up. So let's continue. Um, let me move a little closer. The I'm doing each transfer with a turn. So through two, take from above with a turn the B finger loop, and it, it I think it's it's the last one that will now turn over there. The the blue shank is now uppermost. Shift shift place out. That was the inner transfer. Um, at this point, all the all the um, blue shanks are up. And in the braid, at this point, well, when it's reached on this hand, on the other hand, uh, <coughs> that will be forming the the blue W that you see on the top of the braid for the crowns pattern, or M, which way you're looking at the braid. Uh, and then, as I keep turning the loops, the dark will come up again. So it will be continually cycling through um, blue and black W's or M's across the braid. Okay, now for the outer transfer, reach down through these two. Oh, I'm doing turned transfers, so I have to remind myself that the turn from above, which will be a counterclockwise turn on the left hand. You don't have to think about that. It's just this is this is a turn from above, even though it doesn't look like it, because it counters. It goes in the opposite direction of the inner turn from above. If two braiders were doing this, both of them would be turning their loop transfers from above. So I'm taking it through, shift, shift, and place. Now the dark shank is starting to, the dark shanks are starting to come up. It seems a little odd to me. It makes me wonder if I've done everything in the right order. But anyway, I'm going to keep going. Um, so, right, right transfers through two, take from above, shift, shift. I won't go as slowly in this. Here I will show the, the turn from above on the right hand. We don't go now from behind to grab this loop. We go from the front, poking into the loop in the opposite direction that the finger holding it is inserted. That will essentially give it, a, it will end up giving it a turn because of the way that the sh loops shift onto and off of the thumb, this dark shank will now be on the upper surface of the braid, the upper layer of the braid. Okay, so all the transfers have been done, all four in that cycle. I'm going to do the loop exchange, tighten. At this point, at this point, the um, because of the turns, because of the turned transfers connecting the upper and lower surface of the braid. The loop, the divided section of the top, has now come together, and our pattern, our crowns, pattern called crowns, is forming. Okay, let's do a little bit more of it, and then we'll switch to, I should have been counting my, my, um, my cycles here. turn. You can say whatever you want to make yourself remember what you need to do, but it's good to have a mantra or because once you've learned 
change. Once you've learned a routine, like the, the taking them open the way we did to make the loop, it's very easy to slip back into that. So it's, I find a mantra very important to remind myself of what I'm doing. It's very easy to make a mistake and do it. I've done that on these videos. In fact, I'm halfway suspicious that I may have made a mistake in this because I don't I really think that um, the way I started with uh, one, oh, well, it's hard to explain, but it's not a serious mistake, um, just as long as I don't mess any of you watching me up. And maybe I will undo to show that actually might be a good thing to do here because I want to show you how how that is completely possible to do. Um, we are starting our, let's see, I now have, yeah, see, this is what seems odd to me. <laughs> it shouldn't be, I should just do this over, but I don't really have time right now. Um, I'm at the end of a cycle, and as the way I started, there are, I have uh, four blue shanks up and one black one on both hands. That seems wrong to me. Um, let's see how it looks. It looks fine. This is how crowns, the crowns pattern looks. The the way I braid with turns from above, the lower surface will be the wider one. It will be the one that we usually think of as the good side. The upper surface will be a slightly different looking. There's another way to do the turns. <laughs> this gets complicated with turns, but this is the traditional way. The two braiders would be both turning either from below or from above. Um, the pattern actually looks fine this way, but I think it's a little weird. I think that um, at the end of a cycle, I should, at the end of a full, not a cycle, but a full pattern repeat, I should have all blue shanks up or all dark shanks up. And I might as well show here how to undo in any case, because I want to do that. Um, so to undo, to undo a double braid, you basically braid in the opposite direction, and um, you can also start the braid that way. It, this this way of braiding is making an M shaped an M shaped fell essentially. I'm taking the center loop outward in each cycle on, on each hand. That's the um, the A fell type way of braiding. Uh, if you did it with a a V-shaped fell on each hand, you would be taking the inner, the outer loop to the center with each with each move, and that's what I'll do now to undo. To undo, you reverse your move, so you put your. Um, I have to undo the joining move, the loop exchange. So I'm going to undo it by putting the left onto the right and lifting the right loop over. That just undid that, and you can see it happening. You watch to make sure that it is going as planned. If you have a mistake or do the move wrong. It'll snag up and won't undo. Now I undo, now I must unbraid the last transfer that I made. The first one I made on this hand was the inner transfer. Next I made the outer transfer, so I have to undo that one first. The thumb loop has to come back through these two loops and land on, end up on the middle finger where it started. I'm just going to insert my hand, my finger, through those two loops, and since I took it with a turn, I'm going to take it back with a turn. I'm going to grab the dark shank, grab the closest shank, which I want to end up being the lower shank. It's now upper on the thumb. I'm going to grab that one, pull it through, shift up, and place it onto the thumb, making sure that, yeah, the loop, the turn undid. There's no turn. There's no cross in the loop now. You can see that by following that shank to the braid. Um, and the color turned, too. You can see that with my color. Now I need to get the first transfer I made on this hand back through. The one that's on the little finger originally had been on the B finger, and it came through two loops to land here. So I'm going to bring it back through two loops with a turn. I lift it without a turn, shift, shift, and then I turn it as I put it on the finger. And then I check, yep. It's, there's no cross in it. Other hand, thumb loop needs to come through with a turn, shift, shift, place. 
and the very first transfer in that cycle, that um, little finger loop needs to come back through. Shift, shift, and place with a turn. And just check, yep. Okay, undo. This is a way to braid as well. You could, um, you could braid this way, and it's just as easy to braid this way as the way I've taught you. However, when you get to more than 10 loops, it is not just as easy to braid this way. If you're adding the way I braid with more double braids with up to actually 18 loops, it really is easier to do it the way I'm teaching it here as an M fell um, braid. Oops, Daisy. Uh, where was I? That's wrong. Something's quite wrong there because I must not have turned this because these two colors should be the same. I can see that looking down here that this loop did not it had a twist somehow. Maybe that's the one I dropped. Um, if you keep trying to undo and there's a mistake in it, it'll snag. It won't come through. So you see that right away if you're checking. Turn. Um, this might be wasting your time a little bit. I might trim some of this out. I mean, I think it is useful showing how to undo, though. It's, it's, I do it almost every time I braid. Uh, I might be getting close to where I started. And this is, um, yeah, here I am with all, all blue on the uppers here, but, but, black on that one, and I just think I, I don't quite know what I did, but I think that's a little peculiar. So let's see, I'm going to undo here, no, I still haven't gotten back to the beginning, that's just the way this pattern is going. I have a feeling that maybe when I started demoing the um, turned loops, I started on a uh, not at the beginning of a cycle, and I started turning an outer transfer instead of an inner one, or um, maybe when I laid the loops down. I, ah, this is wrong. There we go. I can see um, when I exchanged them that the upper uh, that the, that the loop was twisted. There, 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 there we go. I think we're actually back now to where, let's just check this. Um, I might be back at the beginning where nothing is connected yet. Oh, aha, the outer, sh the, I'm all dark up on the, most of my fingers and just the thumb loop has light up. And I wonder if I laid it down wrong when I was, I'm just going to turn it. Let's see, does that? everything. Yeah, because now this is how I should have started. I think I picked the loops up wrong or something. Um, now the that really was a real mistake. <laughs> I didn't stage it for you guys. Um, now, when I put my finger through all the upper loops and lift up, they completely separate. The braid completely separates. That was how I was first braiding it. So I'm back to the beginning. All the dark shanks are up. There is no mistake. Nothing's tying the braid together. And now, when I start, this would be a better place to start anyway. Um, now, when I start turning my transfers, they should end up after after one color repeat. I should have all light blue shanks up the way I have all dark shanks up. So let's start again from the beginning. Um, I'm going to. I've been. I've just erased what I did with you, and now uh, I'm back to where we started in the first video, where all the transfers have been unreversed, open, straight. I haven't turned any of these loop transfers. I have a completely divided braid, making a loop at the top, and now I'm going to start turning my transfers, making a solid rectangle braid through two, 
and I'll count the I'll count the cycles now. So this is the first cycle. One turn. One. Oop, not turning it. There we go. Turn. Turn. I've now I now have two loops that have turned over and, and um, the upper shank has become the lower shank, lower has become upper. These are will be tying the braid, the upper and lower surface of the braid together the, as the braid forms. Okay, one, I'm still in the first cycle, turn. One turn. This is uh, usually what I say to myself. Exchange. I would put that into your mantra in the beginning. I don't usually say it to myself anymore. It's become automatic. But I used to often forget to do the exchange. Okay, two, cycle two, turn. Two, turn. Two, turn. Two, turn. Exchange. Three, turn. Oh, okay. I was totally wrong about this braid. <laughs> three turn. Three turn. Three turn. It does end up with, um, because I'm not at a complete color repeat. I, I At this point, after the third cycle, uh, you will have, I erased for nothing. It's fine. But um, you will have you have not come to a full pattern repeat because I haven't come back to all the blue shanks, all the dark shanks up. And um, the half repeat for this braid, I now realize, is at two and a half cycles, which is a little hard to show. Um, so anyway, okay, that was cycle three. When we get to cycle, f the end of cycle five, all the dark shanks will be up. So let's continue. Here's cycle four. Turn. Four, turn, four, turn, four, there's the turn, exchange, five, turn, five, turn, I'm saying turn just to remind myself to turn, turn. I'm saying five so that I know where I am. Um, the colors could tell me as well, but five for this pattern, for the crowns pattern, the color pattern repeat is five cycles. After five cycles, you will end up with all the dark shanks up again, the way you started. And you will have um, your, the first W is visible, or M, it doesn't, it's clear on the top surface. So that's, uh, for this braid I would usually count to five, five cycles. If I came to this cycle, the end of the fifth cycle, and I had one loop wrong, one loop was, and I looked down and I didn't see all the dark shanks up, one was, one was light, I would know I had made a mistake. At that point I could just turn it back for a solid rectangle braid, it isn't tying anything together. If this were a flat braid, one that you want to open flat, you would have to undo or it would really be snagged there or look terrible. Um, and undoing is the best way to fix the mistake anyway, so you don't have a mar in your braid. Okay, so fifth cycle. So now I, s I start counting again, because this, since this, this color repeat only has, is a five cycle color repeat, I'll start again, and th my error check will be every five cycles to make sure that the dark shanks are all up. Uh, how much time do we have? Okay, let's, um, so I start now saying, to myself saying one, because I'm on the first cycle of this next repeat, so one, and I should say turn, so I remember to do it this way and not this way. One turn. I have to say one every time because I forget. One turn. Turn. I space out. Exchange. Two turn. Two turn. Two turn. I'm slowing down at that thumb, uh, the outer exchange so you can see it. It's the trickiest one. Three, turn, three, turn, three, turn, and three, turn, exchange.
change. And as before, I, I just have, you know, I'm noticing now <laughs> at that point, at three, I will have all light up except with some loops. Okay, four, turn, four, turn, four, turn, four, turn, exchange, and last one in this repeat, five, turn. Five turn and five turn. Okay, here's my error check. Oh, let's do the exchange before I forget. Tighten. All the dark shanks are up again. And now I want to switch to um, the cra the edge pattern. Uh, let's park my loops and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We've been making the crowns pattern. Here it is on the upper surface. There it is. It looks a little bit different on the... Actually, this was, as I braided, this was the lower surface. I think of it as the good side, so <laughs> I can get mixed up. I, now it's the upper surface. As I braided it, it was like this. Um, and now I'm going to... I want to switch to the edge pattern. You could start with the edge pattern, too, if you if you started the way I'm going to show you. For the edge pattern, crown's pattern started with all the dark shanks or all the light shanks on the same side of the fingers, up or down, doesn't matter. That will start rotating through all the, the two colors of crowns. For the edge pattern, you can decide what whether you want, if you're considering the bottom side, the lower side that's somewhat wider and more filled out looking to be the good side, do you want the dark edge to be on the on the out, do you want a dark edge or a light edge? And I'm going to go for the dark edge, like I have here, which will actually mean a light edge on the surface facing me. So let's put it that way. On the surface facing us, we're going to go for a light colored edge, the blue edge rather than the black. Um, that's set up to have a light colored edge and a dark center on the side facing you, you would have your, the outer three loops would have the light shank up and the inner two loops in each hand would have the dark shank up. Um, you can just switch them that way if you want. You could just turn them on your fingers. It will make a cleaner look, at least it, it, it does make a cleaner shift if you actually just sh transfer the loops so they end up that way. So I want to end up with all my loops um, in the center, in the two, on the C and D finger. I want to end up with those loops being dark shank up and end up with the loops on these three fingers, the thumb, A and B fingers, being light shank up. For the edge pattern, that will stay, that loop arrangement will stay the same as you braid. It doesn't shift. The loops on your fingers won't change color the way they did for the crowns pattern. This won't be understandable to you in the beginning, but <laughs> hopefully it will later. Um, I'm just going to take the transfer turned or un not turned, depending on whether I want the loop to end up dark or light. I want this to end up dark. I'm going to take it with no turn. Shift, shift, place. It stayed dark. This one I want to end up light. So I'm going to turn it, turn, light. I want this one here to end up dark. I'm not going to turn it. Stay dark. This loop I want to end up light, so I'm going to turn the next transfer. Turn, exchange. I'm just going to do this for a short, I'm just going to braid this way for a short time. So it would make a strange shape if it wouldn't be a solid rectangle if I kept doing it this way. Okay, next I want this to end up dark, so I'm going to take it without a turn. This I want to end up light. Take it with a turn. Okay, I have two light there. I want this one to